Oh, you know what? I have another guest coming up, actually. I mean, everybody has taken note of the whole, I get, you know, the whole Rutgers situation with the coach. My, what's his name? Mike Rice and him him uh, beating up on the kids and cursing at them, throwing basketballs at them. And uh, it's kind of a New Jersey issue. So uh, it's something I would like to kind of get into more as somebody who's from New Jersey and somebody who uh, has grown up near Rutgers. This has been a, you know, it's a part of my life. I did not go there, but it's it's been in my backyard, so to speak. So I decided to get somebody who's in the field on the show tonight. It's uh, from Newbridge State Community College. We've got uh, Coach Orenthal Harrops is going to be on. He's a racquetball coach over there. And uh, I'm sure people in this area know that he, uh, that uh, Coach OH has led uh, NSCC to, what is it? It's like, I believe, 13 NCAA handball. It's handball. I, I, I get these sports confused. Handball. Racquetball's with a racket, hands with your hand. He's a handball coach. Coach OH should be on the which line's he on? Mm-hmm. I got purple and yellow man They got it they got it, yeah. Is this uh Coach OH? Hi son. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. We have Coach Orenthal, you're, it's Orenthal, Harrops, you've been the coach, the handball coach, for uh, for Newbridge State Community College. That's correct. For years now. Decades, and it's, yes. it's 13 handball championships. I said racquetball, but I meant handball. That's okay. Uh, yes, thir- 13 NCAA uh, a, uh, handball championships, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, Coach, uh, Thanks for coming on the show. We're trying to get a little bit of clarity for the whole, uh, the whole, the Mike Rice situation. You know what? Right. What is your take of the whole Rutgers thing that has been going on for the last week or so? Well, Tim, let me uh, just say how disturbed I am at this whole uh, Coach Rice situation. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's sickening. It's deplorable. It's shocking. And it's inexcusable, and I, I, I think above everything else, it's totally unfair. How, how is it? Uh, how so? Well, you know, basketball is such a, a big money sport that it gets an unfair amount of TV coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, so much more than than, than handball. Mm-hmm. Well, what 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 do you mean by that exactly? Because um, I mean, I, I don't know what the amount of coverage it has that it gets has to do with uh, the whole uh, Coach Rice situation. Well, nobody ever gets to hear about what I'm doing to my players. Uh, what you're doing to your players? Yeah, it's very unfair. Uh-huh. Wait, I, I'm a little confused here, because you were saying it was inexcusable and deplorable? Yeah. And so how how is that? I don't know how that is. You're, what are you concerned about here? Well, I... I never get any of that good FaceTime on ESPN. It, it, it's sickening, don't you think? Hold, I'm just, you, you, you're, you're. So, what is inexcusable and deplorable? It's, it's so. Wait, are you, are you saying you've done things similar to what Coach uh, Mike Rice did on oh, that yeah, tape? That, that's the thing. My tape would be so much worse than his. Your tape? Yeah. You have a tape? Not yet. But uh, I'm going to start working on one, though. You know. But uh, then the issue, of, of course, is because handball is such a, a small sport in, in comparison to basketball and football. Are, are are any of these big networks even going to show this thing? Mm-hmm. You know, the only two times I've ever gotten any major network FaceTime was uh, when I was doing a Q and A Q&A after my third NCAA uh, championship, mm-hmm. and this young man in a wheelchair 
uh, he was, in, in my mind, monopolizing the, the, the Q&A period. After the, after the tournament? After the victory, yes, uh-huh. after we were crowned champions. And I think it was because he was in a wheelchair that the other reporters were deferring to him to let him keep asking questions as to, so they wouldn't seem unsympathetic, you know? Mm-hmm. But as it went along, he's going on his, like his seventh or eighth question in a row, it really began riling me. Mm-hmm. And I began to wonder if this cat was even handicapped at all. The the person asking you the questions. Yeah, so I begin to really think, you know, is this is this cat pulling one over on me? Mm-hmm. So I go over to him, and I dumped him out of the wheelchair. Really? Yeah, you'll never guess what happened. That he, he, he was faking it? No. No, he wasn't. Oops. It was sick. Yeah, that is, that's, I, I, that's horrible. Yeah, well... Thankfully, this was only shown on ESPN NJ, mm-hmm. and you can only get that in the waiting room of selected Pep Boy stores. Okay. Yeah. The other time I, I was on, on the big TV was um, when ESPN Four broke that story about my player graduation rate. About the amount, um, the, like the the graduation rate for for handball. Exactly. Players. Yeah. What, yeah. what what is the graduation rate? It was a negative five percent. Negative five percent. Yeah. How how is negative five percent even possible? Well, they said my teaching was so ineffective that not only did none of my players graduate, but several non players quit school because of my teaching. Because because of your teaching. Yes. Uh, what were you teaching? Well, I, I I came to the school as a health teacher, but you know after after a few years, I, I felt that. You know, that was just me falling into that role of the typical coach who has to teach something during the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. So I, I asked to be switched to the math department, and I began teaching trigonometry. Trigonometry, wow. I mean, that's, 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 pretty, uh, that's pretty complicated stuff. Yeah, you're telling me. Mm-hmm. What, what was I thinking when I told them I could teach that? I mean, that's the, something you have to be... You have to be certified to teach something like mathematics, right? Define certified. Well, <laughs> I guess I guess you know certified by the state of New Jersey would be me defining certified. Oh, no, I wasn't. So I had to stop teaching that. But by then, the, the handball team w- was winning so many consecutive championships, and uh, you know, b- essentially, th- that was all that uh, that Dean Dean ultimately cared about. Uh, Dean Dean. Yeah, the dean of the college. I, I, actually, I, his full name is Dean Dean Dean. His parents actually named him Dean, first name and the last name Dean, and you know, but then he became a dean of a college, so it, it's like a triple Wookie right there. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Dean, Dean, Dean. I've never heard a name like that. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah. He has no sense of humor. He, what's that? He has no sense of humor about it About either. it, yeah. He, he doesn't see why, why it's interesting. That his name is Dean, Dean, and he became a Dean. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking, of, you're, you're just mentioning names. Right. And you've kind of got an interesting first name. I do, yes. You know, people call you Coach, what do they call you, Coach O.H.? Coach O.H., yes. Coach O.H. It sounds really good fast when you say it fast. The kids love to chant it at the games. Say it fast. Coach O.H. 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 Sounds like a like an Indian on a train, doesn't it? What? It, it's, um, yeah, it, does, it hurts almost to say it. Yeah, Coach O.H. Coach O.H. Coach O.H. Coach O.H. But your name, uh, O. You never said it. The O is Orenthal. Right. Your first name. That's correct. And I mean, yeah. I've, there's, I've only heard of one person uh, named Orenthal. Yeah, sadly, that uh, it, it's become a, a bit of an infamous name. Mm-hmm. Um, oddly, I was born just a few weeks after O.J. Simpson. Mm-hmm. So he, he wasn't famous yet, and I'm definitely not named after that walking garbage. Uh, O.J. Simpson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's a name that my, my dad read in one of the erotic uh, picture books that he so loved and got such a kick out of hiding from my mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So that he got it. So that's where he got the name Orenthal from. Yes, yeah. It, it's just a shame that that the name has become synonymous with su- with such a terrible, dreadful, disgusting villain who wasn't able to lead his team to a single Super Bowl win. <laughs> that's not why he's. I mean, I think people would think he's, you know, terrible and disgusting for something other than that he didn't win a Super Bowl. Oh well. You know, irregardless, don't call me Orenthal. Call, call me Coach O.H., okay? Okay. Okay. Coach- and anyway, getting back to my teaching. Yeah. Dean Dean had, had no choice but to remove me from the, the mathematics department, but, he, you know, he needed to keep me because we kept winning these, these national championships. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, he found a new place for me in the foreign language department. Foreign language? Yeah. Like, what, were, what were you teaching in foreign language? Russian. So Russian, that's something, you're accredited with Russian? Oh, yeah. Really? Really? You sound, you're, okay, you're accredited with being able to speak Russian? Well, I, I studied really hard of it. Uh-huh. Where Where did you study? College. What college? Moscow on the Hudson. What's that? Moscow on the Hudson. Mo- State. Moscow on the Hudson State. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's not the movie. Moscow on the Hudson. That's not what you're talking about, because there's a Robin Williams movie. Define talking about. I mean, is that where you learned how to speak Russian? Yet. No, wait, that, that's no. Um, yeah, what's n- yes? Da, yeah. da maybe? Where, where's my copy of that movie? It, <laughs> so that's it's all probably you... on Netflix. Hang on. He's, I've seen it so many times. He says it kind of early in the movie. He says uh, what? It throws up. Yeah. Look, most of my students think I'm a great teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your students like they like your teaching stuff. Oh, they love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm I'm assuming those students who like that are athletes who uh, you probably go a little easy on let let some stuff slide. Man, you are you're on me more than my last three wives. Three, your last three wives. Yeah. So you've been married three times. No, you judgmental bastard. I've been married eight times. Why? <laughs> eight. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. My my new wife, she's my soulmate forever. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a funny what? story how we met. We met at a costume party last Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure, we've been having a lot of arguments lately, but, you know, show me one married couple that doesn't argue. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, man, she was, she was, oh, she was stunning that night. She was dressed, check it out, as Marilyn Monroe. Man, what a knockout. She looked just like her. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah this is kind of interesting that you're you're talking about this. Right. Uh, eight marriages. I've always wondered how that is that people who've, ha- ha- like, People have been married that many times. It's so fascinating to just keep going back again and again, and like what this is wife number eight. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, what like what about the previous wives? Like, how, how did? What's the story with them? Well, you know, it's interesting when when now that you bring it up, now that I think about it, I I, I met them all at costume parties. Not all Halloween parties, but the, but costume parties, yeah. You met all these, ever, so your eight wives. All of them, yeah. You you met at costume parties. Yeah, I never realized that. Yeah, I uh-huh. never thought about that. Yeah. Uh huh. And what were they dressed as? Uh, um, let me think. You know, now that I think of it, they, they were all dressed as Marilyn Monroe. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's okay. So that's like your thing. I guess it is. I never really realized that. Mm-hmm. And they all seem to last about a year, now mm-hmm. that I'm thinking about mm-hmm. it. So what, what? So they last a year? Yeah. Uh-huh. You said something about arguing? Right, yeah. You're yeah. saying no, you know, the show you marriage that doesn't have arguing in it? Right, yes, yeah. Like, what? what is the... What are you guys arguing about now? What are, what are you and your eighth wife arguing about? Well, you know, Sheila and I have been arguing lately over her wardrobe choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, how so? Like, what, what aspect of her wardrobe choices? Well, it, it, it's, it's more what, what Sheila doesn't wear that's the issue. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. 
Can I guess what she's not wearing? That, sure, yeah, give it a shot. You'll never get it. That's right. Well, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. And guess that your wife is not wearing the Marilyn Monroe costume that you met her in. Yeah. Uh huh. And that's is can I guess? You know, is that is is are we along the same lines of what made the marriages dissolve? Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, it, it was something very similar to that. Yeah. So you, but this is something you've never put. Not really. No, never really put uh, two and two together. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you said your wife is. Uh... So you're arguing with her now about yeah. this, and yeah. you, you argued with all the other wives about it. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, until about a year is up. Uh huh. Yeah. And then it just. Then what you? And you, I kind of split off. Yeah. yeah uh huh. Kind of sulk off in silence and mm-hmm, start mm-hmm. anew. Did you say your wife's name was Sheila? Yeah, she's a wonderful woman. Last name, uh, her maiden name is Larson, and and she's a, she's actually the ex girlfriend. It's funny of this this student that I had. His name's um, what was his name? Dom Sharpling. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! What a half Crete and half putz that guy was. Uh huh. Well, uh, that. That's actually my older brother. Wait, what? What? What's What's your first name? Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom Sharpling. You sound you, you sound like a like a Tim. No, it's Tom. Definitely not a Tom. You You have that total droop shoulder voice. Has anyone ever told you that? So someone said it to me. Really? But it's not. It's look. I don't have droop shoulders, and my name is definitely Tom. Okay. And I actually wasn't going to bring this up because I thought we were talking about the. Rutgers coach, but I actually had you. Uh, you were actually my health teacher one, for one year. Really? Mm-hmm. Tom Sharpling. Mm-hmm. Tom Sharpling. Mm-hmm. Not the kid with the wacky packages. Yeah. Oh no. my God. What? I I can't believe you're still alive. For one thing, why, why? Why would I not be alive still? Oh, I don't know. You just seem like one of those kids who would be beaten up by a bunch of jocks one day at the prom, and then stuffed into an old oil drum, and then set adrift on the Sea of Newbridge, oh, that... never to be heard from again. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, you're in my class. You probably learned a lot from me, didn't you? Well, you know, I, I, yeah, I guess you could say I learned stuff from you, but it wasn't exactly the kind of stuff that works. That you know. What do you mean? Well, like, I I remember one time you were talking about, like, human reproduction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. My specialty. Uh-huh. But you ended up going up to the chalkboard, and you were doing drawings. It, it, you were calling it along the... It was something like how to get the best... The most, like, how to get the most out of your lap dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I, th- I thought that was, like, a crucial life lesson that uh, you guys could uh, could learn from. And, and the ladies, you know, could, could learn how much to charge. What? Oh, well, that's charming. So any female in the class you were assuming would go and be a stripper. They're called exotic dancers, you munch. Well. Show the strippers some respect. And you... You were so. I remember you were talking about. You were saying like, the kind of shorts you should wear. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And you you even had like a diagram drawn. Right. You know you're trying to you kept hitting like how to get the the most value for spending the least amount of money. Yeah yeah well I know I knew you kids were on a budget like like me. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you even I remember you having like, printouts, of. Like floor plans for all of the strip clubs in the area. Yeah, so you could get away if uh-huh. if you didn't uh, if you didn't have enough dough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just remember that that was your take on human reproduction in the health class. Well, yeah, I, I didn't actually. I wasn't accredited in that either. If you can believe that. Uh huh. Yeah. I also remember you were you you'd make people. You'd have you you would hold these contests for grades, right? Where people were just putting things in their mouths. 
this ring a bell? It does, yes, yeah. Like yeah. Chalk. There, there being some like erasers and some paper clips yeah, and, and chalk. Ch- exactly. All yeah. these things to see who could fit the most in their mouths without right. kind of losing their lunch. Right. And then I think there was something else that, that, that uh, followed that, right? Where if somebody did, you know, lose their lunch, you'd make them do this dance. And then everybody would throw stuff at them. The puke dance, yeah. Yeah, the puke dance. I thought it was funny. Uh-huh. You didn't think that was funny? Not really. Oh, uh, okay. No. Um, I even remember... Do you remember the time... Because I, re- I remember pretty clear you took the CPR, like the Recessa Annie... Oh, right, yes, yeah. And you dressed it in your clothes... Yeah. And kind of positioned it at the desk. Yes, Recessa Doug was his uh-huh. name. Yeah. And you you had it there so that it would look like you were teaching the class, Mm -hmm. and then you left school grounds. But the thing is, you put your clothes on the the Recessa Doug. Is Recessa Doug? Yes, Recessa Doug. Yes, Uh the clothes that I wore to work that day, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, but then that meant you you went out of the classroom naked. Yeah, yeah. That was always such a weird decision. Well, it it was by design. I'll, I'll be honest. It, mm-hmm. it was there. It wasn't an accident that, that I left school naked. Really? Yeah. Like, wh- where were you going? I drive around. Naked. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had a nice sports car. Uh huh. And I, I I like to drive around. I like to feel the wind down there. What? Yeah. I'd crank up my music. Uh-huh. I, I was an older guy, but I I, I like the hard rock sounds. Okay. Yeah, I, I especially liked hard rock bands whose native language was not English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like who? Uh, Scorpions, I love them. I like Loudness. Mm-hmm. Uh, Except, uh, you know, of course, their their big song, uh, Beast to the W. Yeah. And Creator, I liked a lot, too. Creator. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, speaking of music. Yeah. What was the um, the T-shirt you used to always wear in class? What was it? I think it was a band. What were they called? Big Dippers? Big. It was Big Dipper. What was that? It was a band. I wasn't sure if it was a band or an ice cream store. No, no it was a band. Oh. You should have told me about them because I, I could have gotten them on Saturday Night Live when I hosted. Wait, you, you hosted Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I that's, that's news to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was asked to host... Uh, the, the year I led the Newbridge State Community College uh, gentlemen marauders to our fourth consecutive uh, national handball championship. Ugh. So you didn't watch uh, Saturday Night Live all the uh, time? Well, great, you know, great show. Not, not. It was not. A, I mean, I watched to a degree, but uh, you know, it was not my favorite. You know, it's a hilarious show. Well, I mean, it's been around a long time. I, I I would look. I would watch it, but it always seemed like a pale comparison to, to what to Saturday Night Live. Oh, right. Because you know, Saturday Night Live was on the Shout Network. Yeah. And I guess it's like a what would you call it? It's been on a long time. You it's been know? on actually longer than Saturday Night Live. Well, I'm, you know, this is actually a point that I guess a lot of people, it, I think it was on like three minutes earlier, something like that, right? Still, still longer, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it started at 11.27 p.m., I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, n- 1975. Uh-huh, the same night yep. that Saturday Night Live started. Yep. Uh-huh. And then it was just, but it, people get hung up on, like, it, there's such a, like a, a weird kind of... Like a, a second class mentality with it. I never picked up on that. No. Uh-huh. Like they had the, the thing where it's just like, "Don't forget, we're here too." Was a oh, big. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. G- great cast though. Uh huh. Launched a lot of great careers. Yeah, I, I, you know, there's been funny people have come through it. You oh, know, yeah, through the yeah, doors. Yeah. You know. I loved. Uh, my favorite, of course, was Keith Vargas. Mm-hmm. You know, let's. How many can you can you name a bunch of the people? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, like I said, Keith Farkas. Well, let's go. Let's see if we can go back and forth. Let's see who can run out first. Okay. 
Uh-huh. Done. All right, I, I started with Keith Farkas. Okay, uh, Robert Albrecht. Uh, Bob Gaskins. Uh, then there's uh, Janice Puck. Um, Mickey Stillwater. Uh huh. Eric Timmons. J.J. Dubrow. Uh huh. Then there was Tommy Lasorda, and then his nickname was not that to- not Tommy. That Tommy, yeah. Tommy, not that Tommy Lasorda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stan Perstetter. Uh huh. Uh, do you remember Alan Michael Senior? I do. I mm-hmm. do. He was good. Uh, shame what happened to him. Um, Wesley Sessions. Mm hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Ivan Korshak. <laughs> I know you had a thing for this this woman. Uh huh. Like I did. Betty Welp. Betty, we, I remember Betty Welp. Yeah, yeah. she was great. Uh, Stephen P. Scarborough. <laughs> uh, Jason Zunk. Uh huh. Neil Lasagna. T.J. T.J. Coleman. Tommy yeah. T.J. Coleman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Lawrence Boone. Uh, Jake Emery. Uh huh. You remember Kevin Turner? I do. Um, oh, here's one from the first season. He didn't last long. Wink Signal Esquire. Wow. Where'd you... Yeah. That is, that's going back. Remember what happened to him? I don't. He got exsanguinated. I knew, I knew he was no longer with us, but... Yeah. I did not know it was an exsanguination. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know that scene in The Exorcist 3 where, where, they, where George C. Scott and the minister come back into the room... And the guy, um, he's it, the, there's a guy laying there with no blood in him. Mm-hmm. All the blood is is put in individual cups. It's like fifty some cups. Mm-hmm. They didn't spill a drop. Mm-hmm. That was actually actually um, wink signal in the bed. They actually did that to him. Really? Yeah. No one ever got charged though because it was Hollywood. So they got away with it because it was Hollywood. Yep. Uh huh. Do you remember? Uh... I think she was from the from like the eighty six eighty seven cast. Sasha Dodd. Oh, had the mohawk. Yeah. Yeah. What about Ben Heap? He was he was uh, the the really fat guy. Yeah, I didn't like him. Like, usually there's like a fat guy on these shows. Yeah. But it seemed like with Ben Heap, it seemed he was just like a load. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a polite. He didn't know. even fit into his individual picture. Do you remember that? Where it was like. The cat. I remember a cast picture. Yeah. With him spilling out. Yeah. From the right, he was like far right in it. Yeah. And then you could actually see him somehow coming yeah. into the left side of the frame. Also. Exactly. They called him the spiller. <laughs> it was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you remember Mar- uh, Marion Marion Crinkle? Uh huh. Yeah, I did her that night. Ugh. What. That's that's I guess that's between you and her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about uh, Steve Stephen we- Weisberg? Yes, he was good. Uh huh. What about the stick? Uh huh. Oh yeah, Ro- Robbie uh, Chapman. Robbie Chapman. Stick. Yes. Robbie Stick. Ch- was that was it? Did his he, nickname come from the Chapman stick? Uh, no. No. Well, he was on the night I was on too. Uh huh. Part of the cast. Uh huh. Yeah, mine was bigger. Okay, I, I, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, well, that's that's what you we were asking about. Oh, my turn, my turn. Okay, Gary Sklut. Ugh. Not yeah, your I didn't favorite. Like him. You didn't like him. No. What about Whitey Lip? Mm-hmm. I like. I thought he was funny. He did the news for a while, right? He did. Yeah. Until yeah. He said that thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, actually, the guy who replaced him was uh, Race Lansdale. Yes, he was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, and we can't forget um, Alan Michaels Jr. Yeah, the the son of Alan Michaels Sr., who yeah. also had an untimely yeah. Mm-hmm. Also exsanguinated. That's what are, the, what are the chances? I don't know what the chances are. That, that is weird. You know, look, we could name these cast members all night long. I know, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. It, but, you know, some of the, I guess, you know, going through these names, it's not as bad a show as I, I thought it was. A lot of talented people yeah. came through. And there's always the bands. A lot who, of good groups, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to do? I, do you want to see who can name bands that were on the show? Well, the the night that I hosted was, of course, the the Pride of Newbridge, Mother Thirteen. Yeah, yeah. So they so it was Coach. It was like Orenthal 
Harrops. Yeah. The music of Mother 13. Yes. Did you get a chill when that? Oh, I did, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I would have, but I was I was with uh, Marion Crimble at that point. Mm-hmm. You know what? Gas Station Dogs were on. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Kenny Dupree. Mm-hmm. The, I think the Craigs. Uh, I do remember seeing S. Hit Face on there. Yeah. Um... Do you remember this band? They were kind of like poised to be the next big thing, and then they just did not go anywhere. It was uh, Darren Robbins and the Rock Stars. Power pop, right? Yeah, kind of yeah. like brainy power pop, but kind of a little too like studious, I would Unremarkable, thought. yeah. Yeah. What about the Sugar Pie 4? Uh-huh. Um, I remember when I was in college... There was that uh, that band was I Hate You, the Ghost of Anwar Sadat. Yes, total yeah. college rock. Uh, yeah. There was Punk, remember Punk? Yeah, that was uh, Michael Jackson's. His punk band. band. Yeah, yeah. Behemoth, uh, Behemoth Jr. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, Larry Neville and the Fun. Uh-huh. They were they were good. I, didn't, I never, you know, I was not a huge ska guy ever. Right. But I do remember Abbott and Costello meet Frank, was it? It was Skankenstein. Yes, right? yeah. They were I, on four times. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about the Zoom? Was that another... Were they Power Pop? A lot of Power Pop, yeah. Yeah. But that I do remember there was a band that was not very Power Pop, was uh, Nordic Avenger. Remember, that was yeah, a very yeah, controversial... Yeah, that, that was a little dark period, I remember. Yeah, that was one where they ended up having to clear the studio. They did, yeah. Because they tried to get... I guess Saturday Night Live at that point had had the fear thing, and I don't know who came first with their with their thing. You Actually, know, I, I think Nordic Avenger did. That that was first. Yep. So you think like uh, Dick Ebersol was kind of taking a page from the Saturday Night Live. Book, Absolutely, maybe. yeah, uh-huh. yeah, from huh. Mike Lawrence. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, Mick, Mick, Pick Mick, Mick, remember that? They were good. That was great. Um. What's the guy who does the thing with – Elton John is the guy – Bernie Taupin did a thing with Roy Tarpley. That's right, yeah. From the good. Dallas Mavericks. It was called uh, Taupin Tarpley. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Remember uh, uh, Iron's Reggae Challenge? Yeah, yeah. Um, we Are Dinosaurs Now. Yeah. I guess you're supposed to shout the now. Now, yeah. yeah. That, that was good. Yeah. Remember the punk, uh, hardcore punk band ULGXB? Uh, no. Yeah. It was that. It was that like hardcore. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I do remember. There was a band. This guy Bob Timmons. Yeah. What was his band called? Oh, Buckaroo. Yes, Buckaroo. Yeah. Featuring Bob Timmons. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Remember yeah. Sister Sheila? Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah. Not good. The the uh, the, the Hey Now. Power pop. Yeah. No, they really had a. a that angle for that a lot, show. A lot of stuff, yeah. yeah. Hey, speaking of punk rock, remember uh, McCain Youth on Ice? Uh-huh. That was when they had to... I think there was a band that had to change their name from McCain Youth to McCain Youth on Ice. They did, yeah. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, Shattered and Night Live, it's better than than I remember being talking it through like this. I mean, there's... there's a, there, You know... Recur- there's been like a lot of sketches that I guess, I guess entered the public consciousness, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, uh-huh. yeah. Like what? Like, do uh, you remember that marijuana janitors sketch? They were like the two janitors who were always like. Oh, remember the catchphrase that they had? It was like, "Oh, I like what's in that locker." You remember the cool dudes? Yes. They still do the cool dudes. Still. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Don't forget the uh, the, the finger snap after uh-huh. thanks. Yeah, because it was like, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Exactly, yeah. Because it was like one snap and then two snaps. Exactly. Yeah. Remember uh, Jamie, the girl with no balance? Uh-huh. What was her catchphrase? I think she just screamed, look out. Yeah. Yeah. Good, you know, good good characters. Do you remember who who said, uh, this is an office, Max. It's Staples. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was the angry, what they call probably the angry Staples yeah. guy or yeah. employee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, do you remember uh, Stone Grandpa? I do, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you remember what his catchphrase was? I try to remember. Um, he was like all frail. Right, yeah. And then he was going, back in my day. Can you remember it after that? I used to get baked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pod, podcast Pete. That's yeah. That's a, is that they a still new do one? that one too. They still do podcast Pete. Yeah. And what is it? Did he have a catchphrase? That's why you are on my podcast. <laughs> yeah, not so bad. How about Mushmouth? I don't know that one. Oh no. No. He had that catchphrase. What was it? <laughs> I mean, that's not exactly, that's not much of a catchphrase. Well, it's pretty good. Uh huh. No, I, I I still watch Saturday Night Live whenever I can. Uh huh. I like a lot of the new uh, recent musical guests they've had on there. Uh huh. Like like who who who's kind of jumped out at you? Uh, chairs, stoves, uh, lights, tables, uh-huh. nooks, and this week they're going to have that band Things on. Okay. Yeah. The band you heard the, Things. I haven't. They really put me in mind of those bands my students liked back in the 80s, like Haircut 100 and The Fix, but without all that heaviness and bombast. So, like Haircut 100 without the heaviness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. not very heavy. Well, like I said, the night I hosted, uh-huh. Mother 13 was on, uh-huh. and I remember getting into a huge fight with their manager, Rupert. Mm-hmm. He was eating out of my bowl of Chex Mix. Backstage, I went ballistic. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, you know, I mean, I, I overreacted, but I got to say, in my defense, that that was back in the early two thousands, mm-hmm. and it was at the height of swinging Newbridge. Okay. Yeah, I tell you, I was at Club Zanzibar doing medical grade lavender panther venom almost every night. Uh huh. And that's that's the stuff that Kern Pharmaceuticals would only sell to like Keith Richards, Mickey Rourke, and maybe Chris Hansen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris Hansen? Yeah. The, 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 to catch a predator guy? Exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Big LPV user. Uh-huh. Yeah. I did not know that. Did you ever go to Club Zanzibar? What a ridiculous <laughs> question. Of course you didn't. Yeah, that's one of those places I was not, I Yeah, guess. you wouldn't have been welcome there. Only the cream of the Newbridge Society could get past that velvet moat. Mm-hmm. They had a vel- what do you mean? I thought it was a velvet rope. Oh, no. Velvet moat. They actually filled this moat in front of the, the club with liquid velvet. Liquid? Then- <laughs> well, there's such a- I didn't know there was such a thing as liquid velvet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like that gets very hot. Uh-huh. And they lower a drawbridge to keep out all the undesirables like you and... Who was that other kid that I taught that I always, that I thought of you guys in the same sort of way. Uh-huh. Total dolt. Um, Mike something. Mike? Yeah. Wait, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, I'm sure he's been jailed by now for some horrific offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, but man, I cried when my brother tipped off the FBI and helped them uh, raid Club Zanzibar that night in uh, October of 2003. Mm-hmm. Your brother? Yeah. Wait, I, I'm just realizing something. Right. Your your name is it's Coach O H. Yeah. And the or O is the Orenthal. Right. But the H is Harrops. Yeah. I mean, your brother is not Officer Harrops. Yeah, he's my my baby brother. That's wild. Yeah. I, you know, I always wonder what what is Officer Harrops Harrops's. I guess is that how you say? Right. What is Officer Harrops's first name? Officer. Off, no, that's his title. No, his, his first name was Officer. See, our parents were at the very first wave of this power naming movement that, that's enjoying a real resurgence lately. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a lot of kids with names like Miles like, you know, like Coltrane, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yes, yeah, somebody was telling Guar. me about Guar. What's that? Guar. Guar. Yeah. So that's a power name. Exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, somebody had... had Mention that to me, the yeah. the power naming. It, it seems like a new thing. Maybe it was an old thing that's coming back now. Ex- exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. So what, what, can I ask you what it was like having Officer Harrops as your, uh, as your brother? Which it's hard to picture that because he's like such a, such a force. You, you know what I mean? Such like an impenetrable 
force. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I can't call you Tom. Can I call you Tim, please? My name is Tom. Oh, I can't be. Why? Tom just has like a forcefulness to it. And like I said, you have that droop shoulder voice. I don't have a droop shoulder voice. Oh. I don't know where you're getting that from at all. I don't know. Well, getting back to my brother, I- I'll be very honest. Mm-hmm. It's both an honor and a horror. Um, you know, he he's at at the same time the both the the most together person I've ever met, and also the most terrifying person I've ever known. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Go, right. Going back going back to childhood. Yeah. You know, with that with that name, officer, he was destined to be a cop. Yeah. And he's worn a police uniform literally every day of his life. Even as like a a little kid, like a toddler, yeah, he started with a like a toddler's police costume, uh huh, and then it just went from there. He just he he was going to be a cop, mm-hmm. and he actually made the Newbridge Police Force at sixteen. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. But sixteen is like you you know that you can't have a driver's license when you're sixteen, right? No, he couldn't even drive yet. Uh huh. Yeah, but they let him have his own cruiser. So he was he was driving. Oh, with, yeah. Without a legal license. He was essentially above the law, and the older officers were terrified of him from day one. Uh-huh. They called him the police machine. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, that actually makes sense, and it's because you can kind of feel that just kind of force or vibe. Like, there's a vibe coming off him. Right, yeah. With that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man, he's... He's uh, he's something else. He's like if Ian from UCB was a cop. Kind of, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Man, that's your brother. Yep. That hey, is, question yeah. for you. Has he ever pulled you over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been pulled over a couple times by your brother. Ugh. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the, the pulling over was preceded by him waving to you and you waving back to him. Yes! He was... Both times, I was just driving by, right, and passing a, a police car just parked, and just kind of driving by him, out of his window, right. He kind of gives like a little wave, like a nod and a wave, or whatever you want to call it. Yep. And then I returned it. Yeah, yeah, that's his signature move. He what? pulls up next to you, or, uh-huh. or you know, whatever, and then uh, he waves. Yeah. Waits for you to wave back. Uh huh. And whether or not you get pulled over depends on how you waved. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's. I guess that is the drill. My dad used to talk about a drill. Right. You know, that just kind of like making sure you knew how to do the the thing, and right. I mean, that was the th- that we that was the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it was like we were taught to, like, not be too casual right? back. Because Cause, why? Because I'm just piecing this together now. That was, that was why, because I didn't get a ticket for that. Right. I got a ticket, you know, it was always, like, taillight, you know, or whatever. You were weaving. Or right. Just, like... But my dad used to say, not too casual with the the responding of the the tipping or the weight, you know, the nod. Yeah. You know, but also to not seem too uh, too enthusiastic about it either. Exactly. Yes. You know, too too casual shows disrespect. Okay. And too enthusiastic uh-huh. means that you're hiding something and. In his mind, probably running drugs. So if if you were too enthusiastic, you're trying to, like, please... Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned your dad teaching you how to do that. Yeah. Some of the local high school uh, high schools teach that in driving ed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, how, how, how to wave. But if my brother hears about this, uh-huh. there's hell to pay. So he doesn't want anybody knowing, like, the tricks of it. You, you know, he, he, he doesn't want the code broken. Mm-hmm. And if he finds out, he yeah. doesn't rest until the offending teacher is behind bars. Okay. Yeah, you didn't hear this from me. Uh-huh. But he has what he calls the planting trunk. 
trunk in the back of his cruiser. What is the planting it's, trunk? It's this trunk, and it's full of contraband that he's taken away from local teenagers. Mm-hmm. And he plants that stuff on the offending driver's head teacher. As a means to kind of set him up. Exactly. Yeah. And at least five Newbridge High driver's ed teachers have either gone to jail or disappeared as a result. A disap- <laughs> How yeah. does somebody disappear? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. He plays no favorites, though. He, he he pulls me over all the time. Your own brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he actually he doesn't even know me when it happens. Uh-huh. One time he pulled me over. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought I waved right, but I, I he didn't. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. He walks up to me. Mm-hmm. And I smile. I mean, he's my brother for crying out loud, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me the meanest look I've ever seen and just goes, license and registration. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I dig in my, my wallet mm-hmm. and I hand him this get out of jail free card that he gave me the, the year that he made the police force. Mm-hmm. You know, like in, in that movie Hoffa? I huh. think it's Joe Pesci hands one to like an officer. Uh huh. And it's just like, give. Give this man whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. I had one of those, and so I hand it to him. But yeah. he's written for me, mm-hmm. and he crumpled it up, and he made me eat it. He made you eat the get out of jail free card. Yeah, and he made he wanted to see if I digested it. Uh huh. Yeah. Ew. What? So he made sure you digested it. He did. Yeah. I don't want. We're, we're sitting there for quite a long time. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Uh-huh. Hey, you play music on your station, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's a tip for you. Um, Officer Harrops is putting out a compilation album mm-hmm. of all the songs that local punk bands have written and recorded about him over the last couple decades. Okay. Yeah, he's putting a tribute comp together. Of bands who've written songs about him? Yeah, yeah. Like, like what songs? Uh, let me think here. Um... Uh, this band called Oppressed Youth. Mm-hmm. They are. They have a song called Nazi Cop that they put out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about. Uh, I, I. I guess it's about him fighting Nazis. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's what that's about. Uh, this band called Hate Patrol. Uh huh. They have a song called Wave Rider Pay the Price. Mm-hmm. I guess they. You know, they they like his style of doing it. Okay. Uh, this band Hammer of Justice. Mm-hmm. They have a song called Pig on the Loose. Yeah. That I can only assume is about the time my brother uh, found this runaway pig that he rescued. I, I would say that that's probably not about that. These songs are about your brother being uh, a horrible menace. What? No. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, even if they are, uh huh. Like the saying goes, as long as the name is spelled right, it's all good, right? Is that really? That it just comes down to that, as long as your name is spelled right? I think so, and it, all, it also all comes down to the, uh, the, you know, basically the unquenchable Harrop's uh, thirst for power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something our, our dear father, Reverend Gordon Harrop's, instilled in us as children. What is that? Um, he used to say, the only thing greater than my love of Jesus Christ is my insatiable lust for the power that fame brings. And he, he was, uh, uh, you said a reverend? Yes. And he would just, he would put himself above the Lord. Maybe, if, if not above, right there with. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I mean, he, you know, his, he had something going for him. He, you know, in you know those Gordons of Gloucester frozen fish products. Mm-hmm. He's the Gordon in that. He's like the guy who was on the box? No, he's the name, Gordon, you know, trust the Gordons, fisherman, Gordons of Gloucester. That's so. That's your grandfather. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's Gordon Harrops. Yes. I did not. We call that a side trivia. Uh huh. Item. Uh huh. Yeah. Man, my mind is blown by some of this stuff. Yeah, crazy stuff. Unfortunately, our dear father was barged in the mid '80s Mm -hmm. for what Judge Montgomery Davies uh, called crimes against both nature and Mm non-nature. Man. Yeah, but I I know I'll, I'll make him very proud. You can I get my own HBO comedy special. But you, <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. What do you mean? You're you're a, you're a coach. You're a yeah. handball coach. Yeah. So you're now you're saying you're doing a comedy special? Oh yeah, it's the next level. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I, I know you hosted uh, Saturday Night Live, but I'm. Can I hazard a guess that when you were on it, you were one of the. You were probably pretty wooden on it. 
Well, I wasn't in every sketch. Uh huh. How many yeah. sketches were you in? A uh, half. A half a sketch. And half a monologue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember what you did? Did you? How many lines did you have in that sketch? Like one. Uh huh. Yeah, I blew it. Do you remember what it was? Well, the the line was supposed to be, um, hey, that's my locker. Uh huh. And I said. Hey, look at my locker. So it really threw everything? Yeah. Yeah. Because then the sketch doesn't make sense. It didn't. It just went off the rails. But uh-huh. I, I know what I'm doing now in comedy. Mm-hmm. It's super easy. Really? Yeah, anybody can do it. <laughs> anybody can do comedy. Oh, yeah, you just make stuff up. Really? And you get paid a lot of money. It's the best job in the world, and I can't believe more people don't do it. You can't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a hard time believing that you're this good at comedy, especially well, after... watch and learn. you want to hear some? Some of your comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love okay. it. Okay. Here's what I'll probably open with. Uh-huh. All right, here's, here's one for all you Indiana Pacers fans. Okay. All right, so check it out. Uh, Vern Fleming, uh, hey, uh, Haywood Workman, and Rick Smith go into a bar. Yeah. Vern says to the waitress, I'll have a Bloody Mary and a menu. Mm-hmm. And, when, and when she returns with the drink, Hay, Haywood goes, are you still serving breakfast? Uh-huh. And the waitress goes, yes. So Rick says, then I'll have two eggs runny on top and burnt on the bottom. Five strips of bacon on end. Well done on one end and still raw on the other. Two, uh, and <laughs> two pieces of burnt toast and a cold cup of coffee. Uh huh. And the waitress goes, "We don't serve that kind of stuff in here." And Vern goes, "That's funny. That's what I had here yesterday." Okay. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I I, I kind of got lost. All right. He ordered it the day before. Yeah, and you're doing okay. It's, but you're mentioning like, why did they change the menu? Yeah, you're mentioning that day. That, okay. Yeah. That's so. That's your big joke. All right. Well, here, here's another one. Uh huh. So, handball uh, great Reed Emerit, he goes into a bar mm-hmm. with his pet giraffe, and he says, a beer for me and one for my giraffe. They stand around drinking for hours and hours until the giraffe passes out on the floor. Mm-hmm. And Reed ends up paying the tab, and he, he gets up to leave. And the bartender says, hey, you're not going to leave that line on the floor, are you? And Reed says, that's not a lion, you dumb piece of liberal garbage. It's a giraffe. Again, why are you laughing? Uh, so, so the joke is that he said, is that a lion on the... You're not going to leave that lion on the floor. Yeah, but he also called him a dumb piece of liberal garbage. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know how that factors into your you know, your joke, but... Oh, uh, well, m- maybe this is for a higher uh, brow audience. <laughs> Seems like it, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those are your big. That's the big. That's the good stuff. No, I have one more. Oh, oh, you have one more. What do you get when you cross Lakers big man Dwight Howard with a trampoline? I I don't know. What do you get? Uh, I'll be honest. I don't have an answer for this one yet. Uh huh. Do, do you have any ideas how I could end that one? No. What do you mean? I don't know how you're gonna. You, you mean you're setting up a very specific question right and you don't have the joke answer oh well you know that's i i can't think of everything right well, i'll just show up and go to the mic and it'll come right no sure. oh no what's that it's my brother oh no he must have heard me talking about him on the radio Gun out. Orenthal? Coach OH? I just got hit with a pellet right in the. Oh. Wow. That's rough. Officer Harrop's not messing around.